In this video, we will take a look at the Beacons tab. Just simply click on Beacons. In the Beacons tab, you will notice that all of the beacons that you have assigned to you are listed in this Beacons tab. Name, the place that they're assigned to, serial number of the beacon, the hard-coded URL that's assigned to the beacon, the last time it was seen via notification, and the battery life so that you can monitor all the battery lives. You can filter these by name, serial number, last seen, place, however you want to filter them. And you can also go up to 100 on a page. Let's simply click on a beacon and take a look at the settings of the beacon. You can see name is uh, able to be changed. The name is set to the serial number. So we'll simply change this. We'll do this as property since we're using a, a house example for the beacons. Earlier I told you you could change the place. You simply drop down and you can change the place of the beacon. Maybe it's a specific address or uh, some place that you've set up. You can take a look at the hardware details themselves. The UUID, the majors, the minors, the modes, the temperature of the beacon, the battery life, advertising interval, and the transmission power. You can also take a look at the Eddystone details. The Eddystone details uh, has your URL, your namespace, and your instance. The date it was created and the date it was updated. This, once again, is the hard-coded URL so that you can change your URLs directly from the dashboard instead of having to physically go out to every single beacon. This is a very powerful tool, especially when you're putting together different campaigns for your stores or your real estate offices or whatever you're using the beacons for, they can be changed right from inside of the platform. On our physical web campaigns, you have three different options. You have the markdown card, which we will go through the markdown cards in our next training. You can use a custom URL. Always remember that when you use a custom URL, that the URL has to have an S. It has to be secure. Uh, you cannot use an unsecure uh, URL. Use this option to link your website or broadcast your Facebook page. To deliver a good user experience, make sure the pages are mobile friendly. So if you wanted to just broadcast your Facebook page via the custom URL, you could put that page in here. And or you could select a form. I will show you how to create forms in a later video. And you have your Google Nearby. Now one thing you need to realize is that Google Nearby only works with the Android phone. The physical web campaign works both with iPhone and Android phone. With Google Nearby notifications using the UID, you just simply put in a title, the description of the title. For example, let's put a, let's say I want to use App Intent with a URL. Using App Intent, I'm also able to broadcast my Facebook page from here. And I'm able to broadcast either a form or a markdown card from uh, up here in the uh, physical web campaign. So let's set up a Facebook app intent, which will uh, broadcast my Facebook page. Click here to visit or click here to like. Let's say click here to like. And you can actually broadcast two campaigns at the same time. With app intent, there's some code that you need to put in. This is simply FB is the intent scheme. This is the intent path. The page number is a long number. You don't use the page username. Uh, you have to use a page number. I will show you in a later video exactly how to set this up. That way you know exactly where to get your intent path. The page name of the app, com.facebook.katana. Uh, this is set. This will not change. And the fallback URL. If they don't have the Facebook app on their page, you can put a fallback URL here. Uh, for them to go to. You could actually put a URL uh, to your web page or something like that. And or you could put a link there for them to download an app. And that concludes our Beacons tab. <music>